Well, so five years ago, I released a, a, a like a self-financed documentary yes. that I directed, yeah. and um, it was co-produced by my my brother, who's my producing partner. And um, and once we made that, that was like, so basically, when I was a kid growing up in Pittsburgh, I was I was an amateur filmmaker as a kid. Uh, we had a high school TV studio and cameras you could borrow on the weekends, and I would sleep with a pad and a pen next to the bed and write films for my friends. Oh, I love that. And we'd go out and shoot, and we had special effects, like we learned how to make squibs out of condoms with um, Cairo syrup and red food coloring. Okay, we'd yeah. put them in the condom, tie it up, get a cookie tin, mm -hmm. and depending on how brave the person was, depending on where they would put the cookie tin mm -hmm. and with a firecracker in it. Okay. So you'd have to just like tape this, cut the shirt a little bit, or pants, or kneecap, or whatever, and you would have to somebody would have to put their start the camera, up, put their arm in with the lighter, hit the firecracker, and take their hand out, and poof, you know, and then you act like yeah. you're shot. Very DIY, but in a in a fun way. Yeah. So we made I made I you know I made like feature films and TV shows and mm -hmm. things, and I, it was I loved it. I was up at six in the morning on the weekends chasing daylight trying to get my shots. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as a kid, and and um, that was really like the first thing I really, really, really loved, um, and uh, and so I think everything kind of blossomed out of that. I even made like kind of like a big budget student film in college mm -hmm. that was like a satire of like Die Hard on Carnegie Mellon's campus, where mm -hmm. these Russian terrorists take over looking for these satellite blueprints. And it's like the guy who worked at the, the hot dog stand, which actually was on campus, mm -hmm. like saves the president of the university's daughter, like John McClane style, and <laughs> defeats the Russians, and, you know, or, or Chechens at the time, because that was what was in the news. And, um, and so at every level, I've always, I've always made films. Um, you know, it was just time to get back into it. And so, you know, we made that documentary, Le Bear, and uh, that led to me getting a lot of script people started sending me stuff and uh and this was one of those scripts not bad yeah, yeah. and it just um like i said yeah i think it was like the story and the idea of exploring those themes that that really you know attracted me to it just do it yeah you know i mean just do it like you know you can't rely on other people to hand you anything in this business ever mm -hmm. so just be creative. So many times I meet people who, you know, do you have any advice for me as an actor? And I'm like, when's the last time you acted? Mm -hmm. Not sent in your headshot or went to an audition. When's the last time you acted? When's the last time you got people to see your work? Mm -hmm. Go do that. Be an actor. Go do yeah. something, you know? Um, I come from theater, so I'm very much partial to that. Mm -hmm. Go do a play. Mm -hmm. Go do a play for free. Just get up there. Go do something. Um, go write something with your friends. Go shoot it. Go figure out how to, how to do that. I yeah. mean, if Steven Soderbergh can shoot a feature film on an iPhone, right. so can you. Right. Go figure it out. <laughs> exactly. Because, exactly. you know, I, I really think that no matter where you come from, no matter where you are, if you have the talent and you have the drive, you will find a way. Mm -hmm. I don't care where you're from. And I don't care, like, what country, what, it, you, you will find a way if you're, if yeah. you're that determined. CMU, they teach you, there are so many tricks that they teach you and so many different styles that, I mean, you'd have to work like straight through till age 90 to use all the things that mm -hmm. they've taught you. Mm -hmm. um, there were so many things that I thought were the stupidest thing. Like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever been asked to do in my life. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, it becomes the crux of like, five years on a TV show. You know, like, you're going to be a penguin. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to the zoo. You're going to study penguins. You're going to diagram them. You're going to learn how to walk like them, mm -hmm. make sounds like them, interact like them. You're going to do this three and a half hours a day for seven weeks. Mm -hmm. like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever been asked to do. Which at face value is a fair assessment. It's awful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you're going to use this outside-in approach to figure out how to mold a character out of that that has penguin attributes but is human. Okay, this is really stupid. And then you get cast as a werewolf mm -hmm. for five years <laughs> on a show, and everything you were just, you know, that I was taught freshman year is exactly my approach to playing that character. Mm -hmm. That coupled with, for example, they drill you in the phonetic alphabet, mm -hmm. which is a whole different alphabet of sounds. 
so that you can hear accents, you can hear foreign languages, you can hear dialects, and you can break them into pieces and then pick that up. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been cast as someone, I mean, there was an audition I had to go to where there was French and German dialogue. Mm -hmm. I was like a spiritual exorcist who like gets possessed by this demon, he speaks French, gets possessed by this demon, like I don't speak French and German, never have. Mm -hmm. But I went and did what I did. I took my little hand recorder. I went and found German and French people, and I could break it down into sounds. And I wound up getting cast against people that spoke French and German because I had this training. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. True Blood, I spent five years playing a guy from Jackson, Mississippi, which is very specific in mm -hmm. terms of the rest of Mississippi and the rest of the South. And, um, and in this film, I play a guy from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So me being from the Bronx, I mean, that's that's the fabric of the story is, is about the Bronx. The Bronx is like a character in this film mm -hmm. and I and so but I knew how to how to tackle that. And those are all things that you learn um, in drama school. So, you know, I have this like bag of tricks that I learned from there and I just dip into it and kind of build a gumbo pot mm -hmm. out of all these different you know, there there are things I think that as an actor you have to learn how to be. You know, things that you've never done before, you have to learn these things, you have to go out and figure that out, how to swing a sword, how to swing a bat. And then there are things on an internal, like emotional side that you have to draw upon. Mm -hmm. So you're playing a guy who is looking for redemption, who made a mistake when he was young. Like, there were mistakes that I made when I was young that mm -hmm. make me like shudder sometimes when I think about them. Sure. My life could have gone a different direction like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and lucky for me, it didn't take you know violent turns the way that you know this character did. But you know, I ma I made mistakes that could have could have ruined my life. Yeah. You yeah. know, and and ones that I even thought at the time ruined my life. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things you then you know draw upon and try to. I get to talk about my the beauty of the jobs. I get to talk about my life without talking about my life. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like people don't know, but it's like there's a lot of me in that character. Right. Out of that process, I got, I also got offered a TV holding deal, which I turned down, mm. because at the time, this is 2000, you either did film or you did TV, there was no crossover. Mm -hmm. Sopranos and um, Larry Sanders show were like the only mm. cable show, like scripted cable right, shows. Right. So it wasn't the way it is now. Right. And George Clooney was the only one who made it off of a TV series into movies. Right, right. So you had to say no to this because I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And then someone gave me the sides for Spider-Man and set me up on an audition. Mm -hmm. And so like, I was just visiting doing my showcases and I wound up getting called in to go meet Sam Raimi. Oh, okay. um, and it was the kind of thing, and I guess this is like, you know, good for actors to hear too, yeah. which is like, so I'm fresh out of school, drama school. I get called in for this audition to, to read for Peter Parker, who is, you know, like your atypical, like AP chemistry, mm -hmm. like nerdy guy, mm -hmm. you know, who gets bullied and picked on. And I'm 6'5". Mm -hmm. There's no way they're going to cast me as Peter Parker. Because mm -hmm. who's going to bully me? They're going to get some seven-foot <laughs> guys, you know, Dallas Cowboys linemen are going to get right. cast and beat me. No, it's, it's not going to work. It's the wrong role. But I went in and tried to impress them as much as I could on, on my acting ability. So I, I wore glasses, I wore a button-down shirt, and I played the Peter Parker mm -hmm. nerdy character. Mm -hmm. And we got done, and the casting director said, you were great. You were great. You're a good actor. You're totally wrong for this role. You're never going to get this. I said, I know. She said, well, there's this other role that you're totally right for. And I said, Flash, right? And she said, yes, Flash. I said, oh, okay, cool. She said, well, let me go get the, the sides. I go, don't worry about it. I already learned the, I learned oh, the sides. All right. She went, what do you say? I said, no, 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 I'm off book. I'm good. I, learned, I, I, I already got them. I read yeah. them. I'm, I'm, I'm right. I know I'm right for this. You kind of manifested that for yourself. Took the glasses off, unbuttoned the shirt, had another shirt on underneath mm -hmm. in case in mm -hmm. case they said, you're wrong and do this. And, yeah. and, and they went right into it. That's perfect. And yeah. so I read for Flash, she said, I want you to meet Sam Raimi. I think the best thing I can say to that is, is this. Um, a lot of the roles that I play are not, they're not who I am. Mm. You know, like, I didn't, I wasn't a male stripper. I went to like an Ivy League school, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's very different than the characters I play. Like, 
I remember being on True Blood and Anna Paquin, like in the makeup trailer, saying, so did you like grow up on a farm? <laughs> no, I grew up <laughs> in like the suburbs. But, you know, you are, as an actor, you are someone's fantasy of you. Mm -hmm. You're not you. You're someone's fantasy version of you. So what is that? You know, someone looks at me, especially when I had the long hair, the beard, they think I ride a motorcycle, they think I get into bar fights, mm -hmm. they think I like, you know, took this girl to prom and that girl to, you know what I mean? Like there's a, little do they know, I don't, I don't ride a motorcycle, I've, you know, I, I don't drink, I, I didn't go to my, skip my prom to go to Blade Runner, <laughs> you know, to go see a Blade Runner re-release, like, you know, I'm not that guy, yeah. but that's what people think I am. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make money and you want to work, figure out what people think you are and do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can fight all day long to play Stephen Hawking. Mm -hmm. And I could, you know, I, I could do a great, I know I could I, I do a great, no one's ever going to cast me as that. So don't be concerned because there's all this other stuff over here that I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the guys who are going to play Stephen Hawking aren't going to play the big giant werewolf. Right. So right. let's focus on, on, on that. Um, but also, at the same time, you have to fight to show people that you're capable of doing other things because once they see you as the werewolf they think you grew up on a farm mm -hmm. as soon as they see magic mike they think you were a male stripper who just loves taking a shirt and it's that's not that's not the case at all right. um but i love that people think that i am that yeah because it means that i'm doing my job right mm -hmm.